Good day everyone, my name is Miriam Jane, I will be adding. Today I am going to impart a lesson to you about the discovery of self. Hope you will learn something from this video. But before we start, let us put ourselves first in the holy presence of God. Let's pray directly to God, as what the Bible says in John chapter 4 verse 24. In the Psalms name, in the Spirit and in the truth. So now let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given to us. Lord, please be with us in our past today and all the way long. Help us to learn together so that the wonderful world you made becomes more beautiful every day. Help us to never conform to this world, but be transformed and renew of our mind. And so, the new wisdom and knowledge. Please keep us safe always. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when I say, Hey, signs, you say, Oh, yeah, biology. That's right. Okay, ready. Your turn. Hey, signs. That's good. Okay, so in front of me, once again, this is Miriam Jane Awabiyadi. Let me ask you first, how are you today? Is your soul alive as much as yourself? Oh, I'll show, show you a video about these children. You are puzzle and trying to solve them. Let us watch them solve the puzzle. some animal. Picture puzzles are interesting. Every little piece has its own place in the puzzle and is an essential building unit. Oh, just as cells are two living organisms. Now, the cells are the fundamental unit of life so that the organisms may live. There! The puzzle is almost done! Oh, it's Panda! Well done! These tiny units of life fascinate biologists like Boyce Rensberger. The entire human body is made out of cells or the things that cells have made, such as bone. Skin is made of cells, your heart is made of cells, the muscles that operate the, uh, the body so that you can move, these things are all made of cells. Uh, including the brain itself, which sends uh, electrical signals around from one cell to the other so that we can think. All these different kinds of cells work fundamentally the same way. When you look inside the cell, you see the same kinds of structures. Cells come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. They're so small that we need a microscope to see them. Inside of every eukaryotic cell is a microscopic factory that runs off chemical reactions. At the center, the nucleus acts as the cell's brain and controls its activities. It also holds the DNA, the instructions for life. The cell's membrane protects each cell and takes in the raw materials it needs to stay alive. Water, nutrients, and waste move into and out of the cell all the time. These materials may hitch a ride along the cell's transport network, a network made up of microtubules and intracellular membranes. 
the cell's transport network picks up, transports, and delivers material throughout the cell. The cell breaks down raw materials into the building blocks it needs to grow. This ability to take in vital materials allows the cell to function and perform specific tasks. The instructions that are in the cells, starting in embryonic development, tell each cell how to change to take on a new function. Also, the cells monitor the activities going on. If there's a wound, the cells can sense that, and they will send out the message to other cells to come and repair the damage. So all of this keeps the whole body on a kind of an even keel. Our cells work together in extraordinary ways. The heart, for example, is made up of muscle cells with a tendency to twitch. Separately, they twitch to their own rhythm, but together they beat as one. Millions of them work together to give us a heartbeat. These muscle cells survive as long as we do, but throughout the body, cells die and get replaced all the time. Our body produces new cells through mitosis, the process where one cell divides into two. Since we're constantly losing and replacing cells, most cells in our body are actually younger than we are.
Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA, or genetic material. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as ER. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vesicles, where the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body, receives them. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the powerhouse for both animal and plant cells. During a process called cellular respiration, the mitochondria make ATP molecules that provide the energy for all of the cell's activities. The human body consists of trillions of cells. Each cell contains proteins organized to maintain its structure and function. Join us on our journey and explore a world of cellular information. The bustling activity of the human cell is maintained as proteins perform specific tasks in designated compartments called organelles. The plasma membrane encloses the cell by creating a physical barrier, it separates the cytosol and organelles of the cell from the surrounding environment. This is the site of cell-to-cell -cell interaction and communication and anchors the cell to its surroundings. The organelles are embedded in the cytosol, a semi-fluid substance containing proteins, ions and metabolites. This is the site of several cellular processes, including protein synthesis, interorganelle transport, and a variety of metabolic reactions. A multitude of mitochondria are responsible for the production of cellular energy. However, they also participate in many other functions, such as signaling, cell death, and cellular differentiation. There are three types of cytoskeletons in the cell microtubules, actin filaments, and intermediate filaments. These structures are crucial for maintaining cellular structure and architecture. In addition to providing stability to the cell, the cytoskeletons also act as a transport network for organelles, control motility in cell division, and form the mitotic spindle. Our genetic information, encoded by the DNA, is contained in the nucleus shielded from the cytoplasm by the nuclear membrane. Substructures in the nucleus perform a multitude of functions, including DNA repair, replication and transcription to RNA, which is followed by RNA splicing. Inside the nucleus, we find the nucleoli. They are the sites of ribosome synthesis, processing, and assembly. Nucleolar proteins are also involved in cell cycle regulation and cell stress responses. The endoplasmic reticulum is connected to the outer nuclear membrane. Part of it is covered with ribosomes that translate most of the transmembrane and secreted proteins. It is in the endoplasmic reticulum that lipids and other biomolecules are synthesized. The Golgi apparatus consists of stacks of interconnected disks called cisternae. This organelle plays a central role in the secretory pathway as it modifies and sorts proteins that are transported to other organelles in the cell, as well as to the extracellular space. Proteins in the cell are transported in vesicles, but there is a multitude of different vesicles in the cell, all with different functions. These functions range from transport, to degradation, to secretion of biomolecules. On Earth, there are two major types of cells. 
prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are the simplest and most ancient types of cells. They were the only form of life on Earth for billions of years before eventually giving rise to eukaryotic cells. If you take a look at prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells side by side, we can see a number of differences. To begin with, prokaryotic cells are a lot smaller than eukaryotic cells and have a simpler structure. But bear in mind that this simple structure is actually a good thing for prokaryotes because it allows them to reproduce very quickly and very effectively. If you were to look inside a prokaryotic cell, you would probably be surprised at how simple it is. For example, prokaryotic cells lack a nucleus. In fact, the name prokaryote actually gives you a hint about its structure. Kary means kernel or nucleus, and pro means before. So basically the word prokaryote means before nucleus. The inside of the prokaryotic cell is basically an open unit with no compartments. There are no membrane-bound organelles. However, small structures called ribosomes are scattered throughout its cytoplasm. The cell's DNA is located in a region of the cytoplasm called the nucleoid region. The nucleoid region is not the same thing as a nucleus because it's not enclosed by a membrane. Prokaryotes also have a cell wall that surrounds the plasma membrane. The composition of the cell wall depends on whether the cell is an archaean or a bacteria, but basically it consists of complex polysaccharides. Prokaryotes also often possess one or more flagella, which are used for movement. In contrast, eukaryotic cells contain a membrane-bound nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. The name eukarya also gives a hint about its structure. Eu means true, and remember that kary means nucleus. So in essence, the word eukaryote means true nucleus. Eukaryotic cells are larger and much more complicated than prokaryotic cells. However, they do share a few things in common with prokaryotes. Let's take a look at a Venn diagram to compare prokaryotes to eukaryotes and to also see what areas they have in common. Let's start with their commonalities. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have DNA as their genetic material, have ribosomes, have cytoplasm, and have a plasma membrane. Now let's look at some of the ways they differ. Prokaryotic cells are the oldest type of cell. They're small and relatively simple. Eukaryotic cells evolved from prokaryotic cells later. They're larger and much more complex internally. Prokaryotes lack both a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus and also contain organelles. Prokaryotes are single-celled organisms. Eukaryotes can be either single-celled or multicellular. And finally, the DNA of a prokaryote is usually organized as a single circular chromosome, while the DNA of a eukaryote is organized as linear chromosomes. Next, 
create a wet melon slide by adding a drop of water on top of the cork and then carefully placing the cover slip on top. Observe little circles in rows organized around the cork. When Robert Hooke saw this, he determined that these must be what make up the cork, or the cork cells. Repeating his experiment with other plants and animals, he was able to determine that all things are made up of cells. You can repeat the same steps in this experiment to create other kinds of slides. See my microscope slide playlist for ideas. So, that ends our session for today. Thank you so much for joining, and don't forget, take good care of yourself, and yourselves as well. Bye!